In 1978, a young Josephine Jiraco sat for her certificate of primary school education and despite her difficult background, she was able to excel, becoming the first Samburu girl to attend the prestigious Alliance Girls High School. But her story did not end there. Her hard work and determination resulted in her relocating to Russia to pursue further studies. And after six years abroad, she decided it was time to come back home and give back to her motherland. I was able to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with her as she shared her grass to grace story. Welcome to the show. Josephine Jirako is an engineer, wife, mother, and philanthropist. She's the co-founder and chief operations officer of Elders Communication Services Limited. She was raised in Maralal, Samburu County. Hers was a humble upbringing. Many people now look at us and think we were poor and think we were suffering. We had no shoes, we, had, we hardly had anything, but we had a big family and we had fun. It was village life is fun. When I think you don't realize that you're poor until when you come out of there is when you think, my goodness, anything could have wiped us out. I personally didn't expect to live to be 20 years old. But I'm sure my mother was carrying a lot of that burden because my dad was hardly home. He traveled a lot. He was, he's a prospector in mining, so he would go for years. Uh, but we knew my mother. My mother is a disciplinarian. She was there for us. And it is this support from her mother that motivated her to work hard in school. My mom was passionate about going to school. My mom believed that school was the only thing that would open up the rest of life for you. Without school, you can't make it. So though she herself was not educated, she was only educated up to class five, where every time I brought my report from home, she would look at it and say, Apa ulipata ngapi? Then you say, I had 98. <laughs> As a result, Josephine emerged the best pupil in the entire district during the 1978 Certificate of Primary Education Examination. She joined Alliance Girls High School and upon completion decided to pursue engineering. I was always passionate about engineering. Even when I was a kid, I used to take apart our only radio and put it back together. I used to, I used to repair neighbors' watches and clocks and things like that. So I really knew in my mind I wanted to do something with my hands. So in 1986, Josephine joined Kenya Post and Telecommunications Corporations and was trained as a radio technician. And it is while working there that she stumbled upon the opportunity to go to Russia. I see in the newspaper an advert from UNESCO sponsoring women engineers to go and do a telecommunications engineering course, degree course, but it would be combined with master's, so it's going to take six years. I applied. <laughs> you did not think twice. I didn't think twice. I applied and I was taken. With that, in September of 1990, Josephine left Kenya to join the Bonch Burevich St. Petersburg State University of Telecommunications in Russia. But how was her experience upon landing? Terrible. If I had a return ticket, I would have come back. <laughs> I land in this place and nobody is speaking English. And then it's cold. Uh, my standards, it's cold. So even going shopping the very first few months, you would go to the shop and start saying, there, I want that, I want that, because you don't know the name in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> Despite this challenge, Josephine was determined to make it, and in no time, she was assimilated to the culture. They're very amazing people when they get to know you. They completely embrace you. They don't see a difference in color. They love you as family. In addition to this, Jocelyn says religion played an important part in helping her settle into life in Russia. We as Africans, we, we carry our religion with us wherever we go. So if you're a Christian and you left this country, somehow along the way you, you will gravitate to Christianity. When you're a Muslim, you will gravitate to that. So of course when I went there, I, I tried to plug into a church as soon as I arrived. And it is during one of the religious gatherings that Josephine met her husband, Francis Jiraco, a Ghanaian who was also studying engineering at the same university. The two began dating, got married and started a family.
But how difficult was it for them balancing studies and raising children? You have to really plan yourself well. And then what is also very interesting is that um, the Russian government has a special place for children. And I think most of the developed countries have the same, where they take good care of the children. So when you have a family, for their attention is based on the child and make sure that you also stay well. Both Josephine and Francis were able to complete their studies, but unlike most people who prefer finding work abroad, the two decided to return home. We came back Afri to Africa with, uh, with pride to say, because we're offered options to stay out there. Yeah, we, 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 got, we even got the visas to move into NASA, uh, but uh, we said no, Africa is our home. We have been told, Africa is a poor country, why are you going back to that place? Of course, for them, Africa is one country, so if they say Africa is a poor country, yeah, we said no, we have to go back and give back to, to our community. So in 1996, the two relocated back to Kenya ready to share what they had learned abroad. But much to their surprise, finding a job was easier said than done. Africa was not ready for us. So we have children, we have to stay in a place. At that time we were based in Nakuru. So no, there was no job for me, myself and my wife. So the two of us were totally jobless. He said, basically, buy one job less and get the other free. <laughs> <laughs> it was a difficult time. There are many times we didn't even have food. There are many times we didn't know what to do. And we were renting a house. So we'd, we started doing a lot of manual jobs. My husband would go and, like, and paint houses and earn some money for food. It was disappointing. But we, we were sure we were in the right place. We were like, we did the right thing. It's just these people who are not understanding that we are here for them, for this country, and to improve what is going on in this nation. After tarmacking for five years, they finally got employment and worked for various companies in the telecommunications industry before eventually deciding to start their own company, Elris, in 2004. We do installations, we do maintenance for telecommunication equipment. So we are doing this on behalf of telecom service providers like Safaricom, Telcom, Airtel. But now we, we've, we've diversified, we do fiber, we do, as Safaricom has diversified, we've, we've grown with them. So now we do fixed data. It's our support department. In support, that's where the maintenance actually happens. This team here knows almost all the 3,000 clients that we are supporting for, for internet, for fixed data. Elris is named after our children. We have five children, Emmanuel, Luna, Ruth, Irina, and Sveta. So each of their first letters forms the, the word Elris. Our firstborn is Emmanuel Lentepa. Emmanuel went to school in Mauritius, did telecoms engineering. Then we have uh, Luna. Dr. Luna Kutiti, she works in Norway. She just graduated from Liverpool University, did her PhD in uh, stem cell research, but I'm sure it's a bigger term than that. <laughs> yes. And then we have Ruth Jiraco, who is a medical engineer, went to Cardiff University. Then we have Irina Jiraco. Irina went to uh, Texas, Lutana University. She did aerospace engineering. And then we have the last one, Sveta. She's doing a medic, uh, biology and music out there in the US. And she's doing two majors, music and biology. She wants to follow that up with a medical degree in neuroscience. Since it began operations 15 years ago, the company has grown tremendously and currently has over 80 employees, most of whom are young Kenyans. When I started Elris, well, it was to give an opportunity. Remember, we had been jobless for five years. We completely understand when a university graduate comes to come and say, give me anything to do. I've been out here for six months, I can't earn anything. So we wanted a place where they could come and, and we would say, come. We maybe might not pay you much, but come. We will train you, we will help you. When you step out of here, everyone will want to employ you. And that's our passion. And it is not only through their business that Josephine is giving back. We've started something we are calling eradicating poverty in the ASAL. We want to bring up 1,000 girls, leaders, in the next 15 years, both from Samburu and, and, and Marsabit and wherever, just arid lands. What are we doing with these girls? 
Immediately they finish class eight, we want to bring them out of their districts and their, their home areas and bring them to this other Kenya that they don't know. When we bring them here, we take them to schools, either national or provincial schools. They interact with other cultures so that their mind begins to change. Josephine's dream is to impact and inspire more young people through her projects as well as life story and attributes all her success to her decision to relocate to Russia. Where would I be if I didn't go abroad? Maybe I would have died by now. It gives you hope and one of the things that it does, it gives you a love for this country that you never had before. That there's so much that we have here. And for us who've been out there, our hunger and desire is to make the people who are here see this. And it is for this reason that she advises other Kenyans to dare abroad on our diaspora bite. This is a beautiful country, but go out there if you can. When you hear being these advertisements about people be going to Israel, for example, if you can, go. If you hear people saying women are being taken to China, if you can, go. Why? Because your mind will never shrink again. It, once it grows to that size of seeing vehicles that you've, you haven't seen here, uh, transport with, with, with electric trains and things like that, when you come back here then, you, first of all, you will have the, the, the audacity to challenge what we are being given. Trust God and dare abroad. That is the lesson we learned from Josephine's story. Well, that is all we had for you today. Be sure to tune in next week as we bring you more inspiring stories from daring Kenyans from all across the globe.